Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Friday to all of you and a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Ronald and Michelle. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the support. So first up today, we have a new suit filed against Tesla for a sexual harassment case. So we'll go through the details and then I'll add my thoughts. Jessica Barraza, age 38, said in a complaint filed Thursday in a state court in Oakland that she experienced nightmarish conditions as a night shift worker at Tesla with coworkers and supervisors making lewd comments and gestures to her and other women multiple times a week. When she complained to supervisors and human resources, they failed to take action, according to Jessica. She now suffers from panic attacks as a result of three years of such behavior and is afraid to return to work knowing that her body could be violated at any time with no repercussions. This according to the complaint. So presumably we'll get more information in the coming weeks, but this is one of those that just sits weird with me. You know, the timing seems very odd right after Tesla was just ordered to pay $137 million for a racial discrimination suit. This is now brought up just a few weeks after that. And she said it had been going on for three years. So my immediate question becomes, well, why bring it up now? Now, of course, with cases like this, I want to be delicate. I have no idea what actually happened and neither do you unless you were actually there at night working with Jessica. So as mentioned, we're just gonna have to wait and see. For me, it's just the timing of this paired with some of this wording just seems very odd and questionable. Like this line about knowing that her body could be violated at any time with no repercussions. That seems like a stretch to me, but as mentioned, I'm trying to be delicate here, so I don't know. What do you guys think about the situation? I'm sure we'll get more details in the weeks to come. But next up from Tom Malogny on Twitter, a lot of people asking for his Lucid Air DC fast charge recording. It's gonna take a few days to post a video with a full charging curve. This is important and analysis, but I will say it is absolutely the fastest charging EV available today. It's not even close. So if you're not familiar, Tom is a very well-respected name in the EV industry. He does a lot of in-depth reviews. So he's definitely somebody that I have chosen to listen to over the years. And also of note here is this charging curve. This is what really needs to be talked about for the overall charging experience. Many people just point to the peak charging speeds, which most cars available today only sustain those speeds for anywhere from, you know, five to 10 minutes maximum. And then after that, they kind of decrease in their charging speed. And of course, a lot of this charging curve is driven by the state of charge. So when the state of charge is lower, it'll have more opportunity basically to charge at higher speeds. And as it gets closer to 100% battery state of charge, then the charging speeds typically taper off. And it's this charging curve that once again will determine your overall charging experience. And so not to take anything away Away from Lucid here as I do expect these results to be very good and industry leading, but here's what we have to remember. Can they do this in a profitable fashion? Point being, sure, you can take any amount of money and build a few hundred vehicles that have excellent range and excellent charging capability and all of these industry leading things, but then the question at some point is going to become, can they do this profitably? Because if not, then doing it at all isn't gonna matter because it will not be sustainable. So once again, not trying to take anything away from Lucid, I am definitely rooting for them. I like their vehicles, but just something to keep in mind. Next up, we have this slightly disheartening news about Herbert Deese and VW. And this is a translated article. From my research, it seems like it might be a CNBC type company, so probably worth at least reading. And the short takeaway here is that Deese's time may be limited. Now, the translation in the title doesn't make a ton of sense, and even the original I heard in some comments doesn't make a ton of sense, but what most of us are getting at is that, as mentioned, it seems like Deese might be on the way out as in at least they are looking for a replacement for him. Behind the walls of the Volsberg company, however, things are still simmering. The workers are saying they have no trust in the CEO and the management team around Deese is divided when it comes to the leadership qualities of the frosty or cold business leader. One person is increasingly emerging from the shadow of the group leader, VW brand boss, Rolf Braunstadter, who took over as head of the main brand July 1st, 2020. And listen to what these people are saying about Braun's daughter who may be pegged as a replacement for Deese. He's not seen as icy, but emphatic. 
As D scolds, Braun Stoddard scores with distinguished restraint. He was calmer and less offensive, but still determined and goal oriented. So as I've said before, I genuinely feel bad for Dees. He's trying to do the right thing. He sees the writing on the wall, but you know, it's this huge behemoth of a company that's really hard to please everybody, actually probably impossible. And it's just a tough situation. I would, however, love to see Dees end up with Tesla, maybe leading Giga Berlin. And in the future, whenever Elon decides it's time for him to take a less active role with Tesla, I think Dees could be a great replacement for him. So let me know, what do you guys think? Would you like to see Herbert Deese at Tesla? Articles like this make it seem more and more likely. Next up, some bullish comments from Daniel Ives. We believe there's a $5 trillion market for EV dollars up for grabs with Tesla likely to grab its own $2.5 trillion share of this pie. We estimate China is worth $400 per share to the Tesla story for 2022, and we raise our price target from $1,100 to $1,400, with our bull case still at $1,800. So I believe it's now Wedbush and Daniel Ives and Jeffries that have street leading price targets for Tesla of $1,400 per share. And just a quick update from what we talked about a few episodes back, but it looks like those missing USB ports and the wireless charging mats that were being delivered not working are now being fixed by mobile service with no charge. And here we get some new comments from Kathy Wood. If Tesla is the first to be successful and autonomous in the United States, we're beginning to believe that not only will Tesla take the biggest share of the EV market, we believe it could take 20 to 25% share of the total auto market in five years. As mentioned, this hinges on autonomy. And successfully reaching autonomy, they peg at a 50% probability of success, and that is the most important variable to get Tesla stock to their $3,000 price target. And here's a comment from Kathy that I'm not quite sure I agree with, but our latest thinking is that by the year 2026, the average EV will cost about $15,000. That would be down from about $60,000 this year. So in five years to drop about 75% seems aggressive and maybe a bit overly bullish to me, especially given the lingering effects of the you know what and the supply chain issues and the chip situation. Just one man's opinion, what do you think? And in terms of traditional automakers, Kathy says, we would bet they will not be alive in their current state. They may be in combination with someone else or they may go bankrupt. I'd like to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's episode, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for you to explore new skills. Whether it's how to master TikTok or how to build your own online store, Skillshare will have a class for you. I'm currently going through five day memory mastery, learn to memorize anything with ease by Jonathan Levy. The section on using visualization had something I'd never heard before, and that's using absurd imagery to help us remember things. Our brains crave the novel, and it was definitely an eye-opener for me. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Moving on, I learned something new today that Giga Texas, as you can see over here, is on Tesla Road, exit 446. I had no idea, pretty cool. China has also increased the price of the entry-level Model 3. It went up about $2,350, or a rough 6% increase. The acceleration is also slower and the standard range name disappears following suit with what's been going on here in the States. G4 Tesla on Twitter is reporting Gigafactory Berlin Brandenburg will get its own train station, Tesla Nord. The planning is in the initial phase. The station is expected to be completed in five years, a long time. The construction costs are estimated at 50 million euros and will be financed by the state of Brandenburg. This, by the way, is about $56 million. This right here in perfect Tesla fashion, a new Tesla shop gift card, but take a look at these amounts, $50, $69, $100, $420, and of course, a custom option. So new item in the Tesla shop. Tesla will also be including ENBW and Ionity charging stations in its navigation. This is reported from Germany by Tesla Adri. So at least for this region right now, no longer will you only find superchargers, but you will have other charging options, giving people more flexibility, a great thing. And in case you're in Germany and this is not showing up for you, it might take a simple reset of your vehicle to have these new options show up. 
Earlier today, the House has indeed passed the BBB or Build Back Better plan, but it is now going to go to the Senate where it will most likely see some major revisions and a vote is expected sometime in December. So still a long way to go and this is definitely not a done deal. There's been a lot of questions. Yes, this is indeed separate and on top of the infrastructure bill that has already been signed into law. This is not a revision to that. This is a totally separate new bill. And the Congressional Budget Office or the CBO has found that it would increase the deficit by $367 billion over one decade. But as mentioned, this will face some serious opposition as House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy had this to say. This is the single most reckless and irresponsible spending bill in our nation's history. So we'll wait and see how this one plays out. Also, this news article from CNN has been trending today. One of their correspondents has gotten a Tesla to test drive FSD beta in New York. Very challenging circumstances. It went just about how you'd expect it to go. Interventions every now and then, and you know, not safe for somebody to sit back and not pay any attention. We don't need to get into the details here, but I've linked this article below if you want to watch the video. It's about four minutes long, and I have to say the reviewer actually seemed very fair and unbiased. He was honest and forthcoming with everything, so not a bad review in my opinion. And here I just wanna give a shout out to MH7 Artwork on Reddit for this drawing. I personally have zero artistic ability, so I think this is wildly impressive and really cool. So job well done, linked below if you're interested and you wanna give them some props. We also have a very interesting note here. Tesla is honoring the price from when I ordered one year ago. He put it on hold. So here is the pricing detail. Now, sadly, there's not really any more information given in terms of this specific situation. So I'm almost just offering this up to you guys. Have you heard of or seen anybody having their price honored from that long ago? I don't know, let me know if you have, I'd be very curious. This from Elon, there were no EV incentives, nor did we expect them and gasoline was super cheap. So tough to make the case for electric cars. My guess was that we had a less than 10% chance of success and most people thought 0%. The history of car startups is just one big graveyard. And Elon continued, it's great that they've, referring to GM, changed their tune these days, but the truth is GM tried very hard to kill the electric car. If not for competitive pressure from Tesla, they would be doing nothing, something I have said for months and months. He shared a link to the documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? Worth a watch, linked below if you haven't seen it. From Tesla Charging on Twitter, Supercharging is now up and live in Alaska. So congrats to Alaska for getting their first superchargers. I am sure more to come along the main highway up there, but very cool to see. And also a fun fact, K10 shared in case you're not familiar, for everyone wondering how well Teslas do on the snow, they're tested in Alaska at the testing facility. We also get some more updates to the Tesla app. It now shows more details about your order, delivery tasks previously that were only in your account on web version, and you can now finish your delivery details like insurance, payment, and everything right through the mobile app all before delivery. Now, some people are saying that you won't be able to do insurance on the web version. I have not been able to confirm that, just something to keep in mind, but it might be the case that all of that is being moved to have the ability to complete it right in the mobile app. Pretty big announcement from Ford here. They plan to increase their ED production to 600,000 by 2023. This is basically a doubling from what they had previously guided for. Farley said the increase would double the number of EVs the company had initially expected to produce over the next two years, and they'll be focusing on the Mach-E, the F-150 Lightning, and the E-Transit. Farley said, the demand is so much higher than we expected. It's a really new experience for this big company trying to be agile. We had to approach it very differently than we've done capacity planning. And here's another, I'll say, very optimistic quote from Farley. He said, Ford plans to convert more than 80% of reservation holders for its upcoming F-150 Lightning EV into owners. I'm not sure how one would go about pulling that off. I think a lot of that's out of your hands to some degree, unless you start giving away the farm, but interesting nonetheless. 
So here we have GM continuing to get slammed here, more negative press, but long story short, GM has notified employees that the Orion assembly plant will take downtime for the remainder of the 2021 calendar year. This will enable us to continue prioritizing recall repairs. We will continue to inform employees at the appropriate time of any additional production schedule adjustments in early 2022, as we continue to focus on battery module replacements. So this one is just, I don't even know where to begin, what to say, but let's have a listen to uh, Mr. Sanders here. Frankly, it is not acceptable. It's not an issue that we have discussed terribly much, but it is not acceptable that the two wealthiest people in this country, Mr. Musk and Mr. Bezos, take control of our space efforts to return to the moon and maybe even the extraordinary accomplishment of getting to the moon. This is not something for two billionaires to be directing. This is something for the American people to be determining. So just to be clear, the reason that SpaceX is the premier space exploration company is not because they have a ton of money. The government has more money than anybody. They can have as much money as they want. So this is not a financial limitation. It is a competence limitation. And I'm not knocking NASA at all. I'm just saying Tesla has very incredibly talented people and this is just one of the dumbest comments I have ever heard. Here we have two quick mentions of electric SUVs that we should keep an eye on that are supposed to be coming to the US. From Genesis, we have the GV70. No real details were given other than it will offer 3.6 kilowatts vehicle to load that can be used to power external devices. And then Xpeng is rumored to be bringing their G9 electric SUV to the States However, it's not coming until China until the third quarter of 2022. So I would say at best, this will be coming to America in 2023. And many people have been waiting for the Chinese entrance into the American market. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. And last thing for today. So Justine from iJustine bought a Model S Plaid and she shared her delivery experience. It was actually a pretty entertaining video. She got emotional at one point. Worth watching, I think. She obviously has a huge audience, 7 million subscribers. I've followed her over the years. I'm a huge tech nerd and I really enjoy her videos. So linked below if you want to check that out, but more free publicity for Tesla. But that is all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful and safe weekend and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.